Hey Premiere Pros, it's Paul Murphy here and today I'm going to show you how to take your fake slow motion footage and change it from this to this. Okay, so I have some footage on my timeline here that was shot at regular speed and what I want to do is to slow this down to 25%, which is quite slow. So I'll just go back to my timeline, I'll select my clip and I'm going to bring up my speed and duration options with a shortcut which is Command R on a Mac or Control R on a PC and I'll just set the speed to 25%. Click OK and when we play this back you can see it really doesn't look very smooth at all and the reason for this is something called time interpolation or how Premiere creates new video frames when we slow something down. The good news is there are a few different ways to interpolate time in Premiere, so let's take a look at them. Now it doesn't matter how you've slowed down your footage in Premiere, this will work either way. So if you've done this through your time remapping in your effect controls, or if you've done it the way I've done it using the speed and duration settings, there are two ways to change the time interpolation in Premiere, and that is to go down to time interpolation in the speed and duration window. We have some options here, or I could just right click my clip and here is time interpolation, those same options here. And this is the exact same setting. So if you change one here, it's going to update in the other window as well. So we have three options to choose from, frame sampling, frame blending, and optical flow. Let's have a look at frame sampling first. I actually have a different animation that I want to show you for this. Just a simple animation of a red ball on a green background. This is actually only two frames long, and in the next frame, the red ball just moves to the upright corner. And what I'll do with this clip is exactly what I just did with the other one. I'll bring up my speed and duration settings, set this to 25%. Now, a good way to think of the way that you set things here is I want this clip to play four times longer. So to do that, I'm going to divide 100% by four, which equals 25%. And down the bottom here, you can see that our time interpolation by default is set to frame sampling. I'll click OK, and all that frame sampling is going to do is duplicate every frame four times in order for this clip to be four times longer. And you can see that here if I step through, we're on frame one, two, three, four, then we're on to the next frame, one, two, three, four. So that's all that frame sampling is doing, and that's why when we slowed that other footage down, it didn't look very smooth. The next time interpolation option that we have to choose from is something called frame blending. So I'll just right click my clip. This is the exact same animation that I have loaded here. I'll go to time interpolation, frame blending. And this is also going to duplicate frames, but what it's going to do in between those frames, if I step through here, you can see it's added a cross dissolve between them. Let's add the same thing to the original footage we were working with. I'll set time interpolation, frame blending, and I'll just play this through. I actually think this effect looks really kind of cheap and it's not very smooth either. And when you stop on a frame like this, you can see there's a bit of ghosting happening in between the frames and you have weird effects here where you have two different versions of her face blended on top of each other. So I actually never use frame blending because I really don't like the look of it. The last interpolation option that we have is probably the most interesting and that's optical flow. And I have the exact same two frame animation loaded here and I've set the time interpolation to optical flow. And what this is going to do is rather than duplicating frames, it's going to track the motion of every pixel from one frame to the next, and then try to guess the missing frames between those two frames to create slow motion. Now, one thing about optical flow is you will need to render in order to see the effects of this. So I'll just press return to render my timeline. And if we step through this, you can see here's the first frame. Here's the next frame, which is a frame that never existed in this clip before and it's actually filled in the gaps until we get to the next existing frame, which I think is pretty amazing. This effect is actually used quite a lot these days in films, but probably the film it's most famous for is the bullet time sequence in The Matrix. So they actually shot those sequences with 120 cameras lined up next to each other, and then they stitched all of the photos together using optical flow. But let's have a look at how this looks with our original footage. We'll go back over here. I'll right click and I'll change my interpolation to optical flow and I'll press return to render my sequence. And you can see what we have here is really smooth slow motion, almost as though we shot this at a high frame rate. Now, one of the downsides of working with optical flow is you can have things called artifacts. And if I move to an area where she's swinging her arms, you can see we're starting to get glitches between her pants and her arms. And over here, you can see that her arm is breaking up a bit with the background as well. 
And that's because there are certain ways you can break optical flow and it starts to make some pretty bad guesses about your footage. So it's good to know how we can cause these breaks so that we know what to expect from optical flow. But also if we're going to do any kind of filming that will ultimately be brought into Premiere and slowed down, it's good to know how we can film to avoid these breaks. So let's quickly look at some of the ways we can break optical flow. So the first is low contrast. So the graphic that we were looking at before was a red ball on a green background. Here I have a darker green ball on a green background, same frames as before, but when I apply optical flow to this, you can see it's getting confused as to where those pixels are moving. So it's always good to have high contrast between your moving object and the background. Another thing that you want to avoid is complex backgrounds. So backgrounds with high detail in them, because although optical flow has done a pretty good job of tracking the pixels of this red ball, if I step through here, you can see that all of the noise around here is starting to break up and the ball is dragging it with it as well, because optical flow is getting confused as to what all of these pixels are doing from one frame to the next. Lighting changes can also confuse optical flow. So here I have the same red ball, but in the next frame, it's gone to a darker red. And you can see when we step through this, it doesn't know that these two things are the same object. This next one may seem a little counterintuitive, but really fast objects can break optical flow. So here I've actually moved the red ball to the bottom left corner and then moved it to the top right corner. So that's quite a distance for pixels to move from one to the next. And you can see optical flow just struggles to track the pixels. So then what you have to keep in mind is if you're shooting anything like sport or something with fast motion, it's always best to shoot that at a higher frame rate. Even if you're going to slow it down even more in the edit, just doing something like doubling your frame rate from 30 frames to 60 frames is going to help reduce the amount of movement from one frame to the next and allow you to slow it down even more in Premiere. And the last one is a big one and that's overlapping objects. So in this case, I have the red ball going behind a blue line. When I apply optical flow to this, the image just completely breaks up. And this is why it's always important to keep in mind, optical flow does not track objects, it tracks pixels. So it doesn't know if one object has gone behind another, it's only focusing on where is this pixel in the next frame. So just going back to our original footage then, if you are finding artifacts like this in your slow motion, the question you have to ask yourself is, are they noticeable? Are they distracting and are they ruining the overall effect of the slow motion? If they are distracting, there is really no way to tell optical flow to do a better job. The only way to get rid of them is to increase the clip speed. So I drop this down to 25%, maybe 50%, they'll be less noticeable. Because the slower the footage, the more frames it has to create, and then the more chance of these artifacts showing up. The only other way to get rid of these artifacts is to cut around them. And there you go, that's how you create smooth slow motion inside of Premiere Pro. I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.